I think one of the, the key issues in, in this space that we, we are in at the moment is the search for something new, the search for something different, the search for something that we somehow understand we are inadequate, we, we, we have an inadequacy to describe. The publication we see before us is issue zero, so a sort of preparatory effort to another thing. In the, in the um, mode of generosity and brainstorming, as opposed to pronouncements of the future, what do you, either of you think are the most pressing subjects or approaches for subsequent issues to take on? The topic of the urban for me is such a complex um, issue that I find it almost impossible to encapsulate my thoughts in a single statement. You know, the title, The Fora on the Urban, I think is, is a really important one because I think there are many urbans. You know, I live in, I've lived for long periods of time in cities on four continents, you know, Accra, London, Los Angeles, Johannesburg, Chicago, Edinburgh. And to try and find a thread that connects those cities or connects them in a way that I understand those cities has been, to date, I would say, almost impossible. And fiction, other means of understanding the city have provided some kind of context to describe scenarios, experiences, paradigms that are actually very, very different. So I wonder, what does it mean to use language which we think of as universal to describe conditions and environments and ways of seeing and understanding our, in, our, our built environments that are very, very different? So on the one hand, we, we, we use the same vocabulary we talk about forms, about buildings, about infrastructures, about transport, but in different locations, those things mean completely different things. So part of this um, journey, if you like, of meandering through fiction, through teaching, through, through building and designing has been an attempt to find both a vocabulary that can contain this difference, can contain these um, very, very disconnected ways of understanding the world. I think my first line in the in the essay in the publication is that all cities are fictions. And I guess I would throw out a note of caution to describe like this fictional reading of cities as being different from some kind of real experience of city. Um, the, 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 in, in the same way, there is no kind of digital experience versus a physical experience that, that, that all uh, um, constructive of, of uh, the realities through which we move. Um, but it's to say that, like, you know, my understanding of, of, of the city I'm in in L.A. is totally different from, from someone else's and, and that, you know, the best way of starting to understand what this city is is through the fictions we've created about it. I don't know that I have an answer for what the journal should look at, but I do think I have an answer for how the journal should look at it. And I'm, it, it's going to sound like a cop-out, but I'm going to say, continue as we are. Because that way of being able to look at something almost three-dimensionally, to look at it through the lens of time, to look at things that are lateral as well as profound, I think in the end, unearths a more complex, a richer, more creative understanding of, of what's at hand. So I'm interested in what, what it would mean for an architectural or urban journal to not just try and throw building designs at every problem, but rather to, to be a forum or a space that would be open to all of the different ways that people with architecture and urban training operate out in the world. Um, and to, um, yeah, to, to, to try and say that, to, to, that these alternative forms of practice that we, typically think of as being on the margins of the profession are actually dead in its center.